Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa provided some more details of government's plan for supporting ESCOM financially in his post-election State of the Nation address. Terence Screamer joins me to unpack what the announcement means. Hi Terence. Hi Shamal. 230 billion rand over 10 years has been confirmed for South Africa's debt-laden power utility. That's correct. Now I think we need to think back to the budget uh, that happened in February where um, Finance Minister Tito Mboweni announced that 23 billion rand a year would be injected into ESCOM and he committed that for the f for three years, the, the framework that he works within. You know, we work in these three-year frameworks for the budget. Um, so that was 69 billion, but it was also indicated that this could be extended for at least 10 years. So now what the President's done is he has confirmed that that support is going to be sort of hardwired into uh, government transfers to ESCOM for the next 10 years. And importantly, he also said uh, because of the immediate liquidity challenges that ESCOM is facing and um, its liquidity runway is getting shorter and shorter it seems with every month, uh, the, uh, there's going to be a front end loading of this 23 billion transfer. So they would, so it would mean that uh, although it's 230 billion over the 10 years, a lot more of it might happen in the early stages and it might taper towards the end. So the finance minister who remains Tito Mboweni will have to come back to parliament, to lawmakers, and outline in a special appropriations bill how that transfer is going to take place. And then obviously government's going to have to raise that money on the debt capital markets, which is going to have an impact on our deficit. It's also going to slow down our consolidation of our budget deficit over the period. So obviously the ratings agencies are going to have to look at what that means for us. And we know that only Moody's has kept us at investment grade and they will, uh, it's going to be key as to what they think about that and whether this is so negative that they're going to need to downgrade the country or whether it is something that um, the country can, or the, f the fiscal balances are not going to be put out of kilter to a point where there has to be a downgrade. Is there any further clarity on what ESCOM will be doing to improve its sustainability? I think that was the sort of missing element uh, in in the statement around Eskom. So basically, I think the president confirming Eskom is too big to fail, therefore we're not going to allow it to fail, therefore they're going to be ongoing fiscal transfers and they're going to be, the pace at which those transfers are going to be made are going to be uh, aligned to what Eskom's needs are. So I think that will give some, uh, I think it's, it's quite helpful for Eskom, I think in terms of having to raise additional debts on capital markets, et cetera, as well, uh, as well as, you know, dealing with immediate liquidity challenges, as we saw earlier this year, where some of the 23 billion had to come in a lot earlier when the China Development Bank didn't make its uh, a transfer to Eskom as planned. So that's useful for Eskom, but South Africans want to see what the, uh, you know, some of the conditions are, you know, where is the chief restructuring officer? Where is the unbundling plan? Uh, those were, you know, I suppose uh, for the president, he felt that that was announced in his first state of the nation, the announcement that there's going to be uh, a restructuring of ESCOM um, that will involve the, the unbundling of uh, generation, transmission and distribution into separate businesses. I suppose he sees that as hardwired, but I think there might have been at least a sentence to say that that continues uh, and that the chief restructuring officer, which he did say would be appointed soon, will be key to overseeing that restructuring process uh, and these are the conditions that we expect from Eskom in terms of cost savings, dealing with the corruption etc. That wasn't really in, uh, in the speech but I suppose it's implied given what was said in the February State of the Nation and then very clearly by um, Tito Mboweni as well in his budget where the, 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 the injection of 23 billion rand a year was made conditional on the um, uh, on the restructuring of the enterprise and the oversight that the treasury would have through the CRO, the chief restructuring officer, uh, which he sort of likened to a, a curator when a bank is in trouble and the state needs to bail out a bank, there usually a cur curator is appointed, that's how he likened the CRO. But there's a lack of clarity here and I think th the market and people want to understand the relationship between the board, the CEO and the CRO because especially in the context where we've had this leadership flux and this recent resignation of the CEO, whether this is, uh, is one of the problems, whether there's too much interference from the shareholder 
from uh, the potential of a CRO in terms of the executive responsibility. So the divisions of responsibilities, the clarification of roles are important, but I think it's not the sort of detail you really expect to get out of a state of the nation. In the state of the nation, you really get sort of the big picture, and the big picture is that ESCOM's too big to fail, and we're going to support it. What is uh, not clear about that big picture, whether that's going to be sufficient, my view is it's not going to be sufficient. There's going to have to be other elements. And I know there are, the ESCOM Sustainability Task Team is working on a few creative options for getting ESCOM back on a financial uh, sustainable footing. But I think that package is not really ready yet for announcement. What about the outlook for the structure of the electricity supply industry more generally? I think that was the other disappointment from energy observers. You know, the state of the nation is dealing with a lot of uh, elements across society from crime and violence through to health and education. So, you know, when you look at it as a single issue, as we are at the moment, you know, you sometimes don't see the wood for the trees. But I think th there would have been a, it would have been helpful, I think, just to emphasize that ESCOM can't do it alone because we are going to bail out. I mean, 230 billion is a lot of money. But ESCOM really is uh, not really structurally fit for purpose in terms of the energy transition that's underway. And it might have been good to just at least off the hat to the issue of uh, RPPs and the important role they're going to play, the important role of renewables. Fortunately, I think the president has uh, put a marker down in acknowledging the, the climate change um, threat to South Africa. And also by, by including the issue of renewable energy into South Africa's industrial policy plans in the sense that renewables is now a priority sector like we've seen with the automotive sector that's going to get priority attention from the Department of Trade and Industry which is, is beefed up and restructured and we're going to see how we can build an industry around the renewables deployment which is going to be massive. And there's also this big opportunity which he alluded to in the hydrogen economy in the sense that South Africa with its formidable solar and wind resources has a potential through electrolysis to use its solar and wind, which is going to be cheaper than most places in the world, to produce uh, clean hydrogen from water. Um, and th that could become converted into a drop in, you know, use that and make a fuel from that, much like Cecil does at the moment by making uh, from coal uh, they're able to create hydrogen and they create uh, uh, fuels. We could pr look at using that clean hydrogen to make fuels. Those can be drop-in fuels for hard to decarbonize sectors. And the sectors that are particularly hard to decarbonize are aviation fuels and uh, marine fuels. And uh, South Africa could become, this could be a whole new industry that South Africa develops. And I think the fact that the president put in both uh, this uh, this framework that the climate uh, uh, climate change and is a threat to the to South Africa and to our uh, to our very existence uh, puts that important framework and then to add that we're going to be putting renewables energy into the industrial policy um, and then adding the word hydrogen into that it's not just the fuel cell the fuel cell is at the back end and I know we do a lot of research and development but at the front end making these drop in clean hydrogen based fuels could be a, a major opportunity for South Africa and I think the President's opened the door for that which is quite exciting. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.